ABC Women would like to thank BIPOC Executive Search for sponsoring today's episode. The BIPOC Executive Search app is here for you. Get information about job opportunities we're recruiting for. Keep up to date and in the know about career news tailored to Indigenous, Black, and other racialized audiences. Gain helpful tips and learnings to help you on your career trajectory, celebrate job appointments, and more. The BIPOC Executive Search app, here to elevate the candidate experience for Black, Indigenous, and communities of color. Free to download and available on iPhone and Android smartphones. ABC Women would like to take this opportunity to welcome our viewers and listen audience, families, friends, and our sponsors to our inspirational conversations, fireside chats with 100 ABC honorees. 100 Accomplished Black Canadian Women is a bold initiative created by the co-authors, the Honorable Dr. Jean Augustine, a former MP, Donna Joan Simmons, a Corporate Diversity Executive, and Dr. Denise O'Neill Green, Vice President, Equity and Community Inclusion at Rising University. Our mission is to celebrate and archive the professional accomplishments of trailblazing Black women from all across Canada. The goal is to create an ever-expanding database available for current and future generations via print media, public and private libraries, as well as a website which is www.100abcwomen.ca. We are pleased to bring you a series of fireside chats which include conversations around education, healthcare, entertainment, creative arts, legal technology, entrepreneurship, diversity and equity, media, engineering, politics, sports, and so much more. These we know are topics that matter to us and to you. These educational and inspirational conversations will be made available to all current and future generations via our 100 ABC YouTube channel. This is a great way to learn from our elders, brilliant-minded and accomplished Black Canadian women. Please join me as I welcome our moderator for this episode, Entrepreneurship, Building the Business. Jacqueline Dixon. She is a radio and TV host. Without further ado, Jacqueline Dixon. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for another episode of Fireside Chats with 100 Accomplished Black Canadian Women. Today's episode is Entrepreneurship Building the Business. What an exciting opportunity to meet uh, three awesome ladies 
that are doing the do and actually getting business done uh, and representing the Black females in the community. So I'll take the opportunity now to have them introduce themselves individually. And we'll start with uh, Francis, Francis DeSoul with uh, BBPA. Good afternoon, Francis. How are you today? Good afternoon. I'm doing fine. And thanks for, for having me on behalf of the Black Business and Professional Association. I, I am the executive director of the, of the BBPA and uh, I'm proud that, that you know, this year we're changing the game for black entrepreneurs. This is a very, a very uh, welcoming uh, opportunity. We're changing the game for black entrepreneurs. We introduce the Black Entrepreneurs Loan Fund. We int introduce BAIDS program, which helps entrepreneurs from end to end. So this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much for joining us. And our next uh, entrepreneur is Dominique Denny. Dominique, welcome today. And how are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Jacqueline. Happy to be here. D Dominique, can you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, anything specific about uh, the role you're playing within the business community? Yes, sure. So uh, my name is Dominique Dennery. And what I'm doing is I'm a consultant. I've been a consultant for over 25 years. So my business is a business where I support organizations, public, private, federal, provincial, municipal, school boards, wherever they are in um, making changes and particularly related to people. So that's what I've been doing for, for quite some time now. There's the pandemic. Um, there were some changes that happened uh, this year in particular that have been very impactful on any business. So I'm happy to talk about that, the kind of knowledge business that I've had for a quarter century. Thank you so much. And our next panelist today is Cynthia Manfandeza, and uh, she is also an entrepreneur and a go-getter. Please tell us, Cynthia, first oh, a little bit about your background and the role you play within the business community. Well, thank you very much for having me here today. So excited to be sitting amongst uh, you awesome ladies. So my name is Cynthia Mufandayadza, and I am a relocation specialist. I uh, run a relocation company that services uh, relocations across Canada. It's called Best Movers. So our role is to, um, is to support corporations, uh, governments, as they relocate employees across the country. Um, and we are based in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. Thank you so much. That's so interesting. Wow, ladies, I don't even know where to start. I absolutely love the subject matter today. Um, it plays a really big role in my life, and I'm so happy to have all three of you here to share your knowledge and experience. I'm going to start with Francis. Francis, um, many of us here on the panel, I believe, are familiar with the BBPA um, and the significant role it has played in the Black community for some many years now. Um, recently, there's been some initiatives uh, that uh, the BBPA has uh, taken charge of, one of them being the Black Loan Fund. Can you share with us uh, to what extent the BBPA, what role you specifically played in bringing this initiative to the forefront? I'll be happy to do that. The, uh, the Black Business and Professional Association was actually one of the seats of, at the table. There were five groups that lobbied the government for funds because we had done surveys that said that Black people had limited access to funding, to capital, to networks. And we knew that a fund like that could, could, could assist them. So we were, at the, we were at the table when the fund was requested. We worked for one year with, the, with Minister uh, Mary, Mary Eng, and uh, we were happy when it was announced, and we were a, a total of 293 million is dedicated through BDC and other credit unions and other financial institutions to aid black businesses with loans up to $250,000. And the significant thing about the loan fund is that it is at all our loan educators are going to look at the applicants through black lens, because that's, not, that's what has not been done by all the financial institutions before. So it won't be the financial institutions making the decisions about who gets the loan. It will be black loans officers looking at you and understanding your story and understanding why you don't currently have credit, understanding why you're up to eyeballs in debt because they understand the black story and looking at the loans education through a black lens. Thank you so much. That's an absolutely fantastic initiative. We've got a lot more questions to ask about that uh, during the course of the interview, but let's go to Dominique. 
Dominique, very, very interesting background that you carry in the business community. And you shared earlier that it's been a quarter century since you've been, <laughs> yeah, um, in the in the business community, uh, you know, representing the females. Can you tell us, um, what do you, uh, how do you cope in a male dominated industry? And how do you balance uh, running a business uh, you know, knowing that you the majority of the time you're dealing with male uh, decision makers. Yes, and white male decision makers. So it makes it doubly challenging. Um, so when I started, I was always the only one, always, always, wherever I went, and including at the banks, <laughs> and not being able to get credit. So I used my own money and I grew more slowly than I would have liked to grow. Um, I had ambition, but as women, we're not encouraged to have big ambitions and we're just told, okay, um, have a smaller business. So I grew my business to about a million dollars in the early part of this century. <laughs> and then uh, and then life happened and I, I went over Seas, I came back. So I, I continued to reinvent myself. So in terms of staying power, so male dominated, the best way is to get uh, good mentors and to have a really strong network. So I reached out into my community, Black, as well as some of the white uh, leaders that uh, seem to be more open to get some support. Uh, I find that now that there's more and more of us in business, these networks and uh, like what Francis has just demonstrated, uh, the beauty is in working all together uh, and supporting each other. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. We don't have to start from scratch every time. We don't have to do it the hard way and struggle because there's more and more of us who can help each other. So the three things I'll, uh, I'll speak about now and then I'll leave it uh, for other, others to speak is uh, what kept me in business in a male dominated white supremacy uh, for all these years as a consultant dealing with federal governments and, and different levels of governments, a perseverance, you can't give up, a grit. I mean, it's, uh, I'm Haitian. I come from a long line of, of perseverant people. Um, the second one is passion. Uh, so I love what I do. I wouldn't still be doing it if I didn't. And, uh, but it's changed along the way. So you have to reinvent yourself, adapt to that and find interest, not only in working on your, uh, in your business, but on your business, the actual running of the business and how that can be reinforced and enhanced. And the third one is purpose. I have a granddaughter now. I'm doing this for <laughs> the young women standing on my shoulders and uh, moving further and doing more you know, than I was able to do in that period of time. So that's what keeps me going. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all that you do and congratulations on being a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, wow. Um, you know, your 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 uh profession is so intriguing. I'm dying to hear more about this and and how that industry works. Uh so relocation specialists. You mentioned that you assist governments and corporations in relocating their employees. Um, can you tell us the dynamics of like, what are the mechanics behind actually finding a relocated place for uh, employees of the, of, of the government or any other corporation? Well, hey, thank you very much for the question. So our job is really more on the moving aspect of a new hire. So in most cases, if a person is hired from say one province to another, our role is to make sure that they're uh, packed and loaded and relocated into this new jurisdiction. So in most cases, we do work with a number of corporations that are hiring from across the country. We do work with government agencies and cities across the country that are hiring from across the country. Um, and one of the things that we find is always that connection with our clients, making sure that we understand that we are moving personal belongings. I know that Dominic said she's been in the industry for 25 years plus or um, so you move in your office from one jurisdiction to another. We have to recognize that we are moving very precious, say files for you, furniture and everything. So that's pretty much where we come in. 
Thank you. Um, and I'll just have a follow up to that as well. Um, considering that we are still in the midst of a pandemic, has your industry grown or has it reduced uh, in any way, be, being the fact that uh, so many people are now working from home and, and having the ability to work from home means really you can work from anywhere. How, how has that impacted your business? Well, hey, thanks for the question. So we are finding a lot of growth during this time. Uh, we are finding that a lot of people are choosing to move back home. So we are finding we're in the Northwest Territories with a lot of people that came in from the East Coast. So they're going back home because they're now able to work from home. And we're also finding a lot of young people that are coming out of college looking for opportunity where, the, where there are jobs. So there is always movement within the relocation industry. So we have found a lot of growth during this time. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Francis, uh, listen, it's an exciting time to be an entrepreneur. And it's even more exciting if you are of the BIPOC community, in my opinion. So uh, tell us um, the startup. Uh, so many of our, uh, so many members of the BIPOC community want to learn how to get started. And uh, they have the great, the concept. Um, they have the passion, but they need to know how to get started. Uh, what would your suggestions be to any individual who is considering pulling the trigger on becoming an entrepreneur? And how can the BBPA be of any assistance at that stage? Thank you. For, thank you for that question, because that's what we are about. So I would encourage anybody who's interested in becoming an entrepreneur to join, to jump on the bandwagon. Because in spite of mm -hmm. evidence that says we were pushed into entrepreneurship, we as black women, by the experiences of anti-black racism and, and, and everything else, 88% of the women we surveyed said they found an opportunity to provide products and services to their community. 61% of them said in a survey that we did that they found an unexpected opportunity in opening their own business. It provides increased flexibility for you when you work as an entrepreneur. 73% um, of the people in our survey agreed with that point. And, you know, it just, it just inspires you. With you starting your own business is an inspiration. It, it, it addresses so many issues that we have, issues of race, race issues, of, issues of gender, class inequality, and just finding a niche that can help build your community. So I would say to anybody who has that, had that intent, go for it. And at the BBP, we have 22 programs, most of them geared towards entrepreneurs, but we have a program which we introduced last, last month called BAIDS, Business Advisory Implementation and Development Service. And that program is a wraparound service where we give the entrepreneur whatever solution they seek through uh, another black um, service provider and they don't have to pay for that. This is all paid for by the BBPA. You need your network, you need your website design. We'll get you a black, somebody in our community who has, who can do that service at a top quality level for you. And, and it's, it's free of charge. You want to build your marketing plan. You want advertising. You want to build your, your HR plan, whatever it is you need. You want to know how to access loans. You haven't filed your taxes in years. Anything you need to do, come to us under the Bates program and we will introduce you to a service provider who looks like you, who understands you, and will help you with that service, and you don't have to pay anything. Next month, we're introducing the BDPA Academy, which is the business of. So we're doing the business of PR, the business of leveraging, the business of insurance, the business of contracting, the business of anything for anybody who's thinking about getting into it, but not sure. So what those courses will do is give you an indication of what it involves if you get into that particular kind of business. So we are covering entrepreneurs from end to end because we know that there is satisfaction in building your own business. And that is how we see us creating generational health, generational wealth for, if not for us, for the next generation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all that you do, Francis. It sounds like it's an exciting time to be a member of the BBPA. Dominique, let me ask you, um, when you are in counseling um, sessions with entrepreneurs, can you tell me what is the emphasis, what is the most important thing you want your clients to walk away with after attending one of your counseling sessions? So uh, it is about their own well-being. So the, we, we can't last if we deplete ourselves and burn out. 
and this is a, uh, I'm seeing a nodding head with Cynthia. It's easy to do when you're an entrepreneur and you're passionate about what you're doing, but you also have your family, you have other folks you're supporting. I had elder uh, parents who were elderly and then etc. So, and a son growing up, uh, uh, raising a son. So um, I helped them with the whole, uh, looking at their balance. So balance for an entrepreneur is not nine to five. We don't work nine to five. <laughs> so we work when we need to work, but you still have to yeah. carve out some times for you. So how do you do that? And as women, we're used to being human doings as opposed to human beings and serving everybody else's needs. But an, entrep an enterprise is like a, a child that like, needs your attention. It really needs that attention. It's the best experience. I mean, I wouldn't still be there if I if I wanted to work for other people. So I support people in finding their passion, really being hooked to their purpose because you're gonna have hard times. And so you need to remember why you're doing this and why it's important. And for me, I've always done work that was more oriented to my community and supporting um, uh, social justice in all kinds of ways. And that keeps me going, even when I'm really tired and I'm going, maybe I should just retire. So I, I help people uh, connect with that and then connect with how to keep sane, whether mm -hmm. it's exercise, the way we eat, you know, we can't neglect ourselves. We can't be in, always in servitude. We're in service too, but we also have to remember ourselves. And I think a lot of people I work with, I, I mentor a number of young women, uh, black women who are in enterprises themselves. And it's the remember to put your oxygen mask on first before you help other people, particularly mm -hmm. if you have uh, a family situation where you've got a lot of responsibility. So I also um, get all my services from black entre uh, uh, enterprises and uh, some people of color, some of the BIPOC as well. Why would I buy anything? from white folks. I'm sorry, does that sound too? <laughs> but why would I buy outside of my community? So if I can find people who do communications, marketing, who do HR, who do many of the, um, like uh, some uh, virtual assistants or anything I need as a consulting firm to do what I do, then get it from your community re and work with others in your community. That Some people might just come for a bit where you are and then leave and fly of their own wings. That's fine. Don't hold on to people, just <laughs> provide opportunities because there's room for all of us. And it's an exciting time to be in business. Thank you so much. It sounds like my takeaway from that is that it sounds like it's really important for you to emphasize balance um, and that, you know, becoming an entrepreneur uh, and successfully uh, sustaining yourself as an entrepreneur means that you're going to have to learn how to balance, um, you know, business and, and, and personal so that we can keep you in the game as long as possible, uh, you know, at a, and, and at a, a level of success. Uh, I'll add one more thing, Jacqueline, if I yeah. may. I used to think balance was the same as when people work in offices. And I would get very frustrated by not being able to do certain things on weekends or whatever and thinking I'm out of balance, I'm out of balance. But right. uh, when I had some siblings say, you take like how much the holiday a year? And it depends on the years that you're, that you're in business too. So I take time when I can and I, and I unplug. And I focus and I get better ideas after that to move forward. But I didn't do that in the first five years, you know, so balance over the over the lifetime of the business balance over a year, hopefully if you can, but it, it's and balance over a day in micro ways. But it's really it's really not the balance we're made. We think about when we think of people who work nine to five. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and let me ask you, Cynthia, um, as, as we know, there's never been a better time to be a, a Black female entrepreneur. It's exciting time for us. Um, recent studies have uh, indicated that the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs are actually Black females. So my question to you is, um, what do you believe are the most difficult challenges that Black female entrepreneurs face? Well, hey, thank you very much for um, the question. So one of the things that I faced as a Black entrepreneur 
was breaking the market. And how did we get to do that? So I found that by building a very strong network, I was able to break the market. So I always encourage young entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs to make sure that they are strong members of their community um, by volunteering within the community, connecting with other uh, community members. And that's how a lot of businesses, or at least I was able to break the market. One of the other things, um, like Dominic had mentioned, was the financing aspect. How do Black entrepreneurs actually get to where they are? Um, like Dominic, we started off as Black entrepreneurs with no financing. So we had to tap into personal credit cards in order for us to be able to build that capital. And once we had built the capital, we were able to finally approach the bank and say, hey, we have been running the business for two years and um, this is where we are. So we are finding that the capital is always a big barrier for um, entrepreneurs. And the third thing for us is a lot of innovation. We cannot stay stagnant. We have to keep evolving the business. So we have found that by introducing new products on the market, we stay very current, very connected to our clients. We go out, we listen to what the clients are saying, we hear what they're saying, and we implement those changes. So that has been a strength for our business. And uh, just kind of coming back to Dominic's discussion on balancing mental health, I find that it is very important. Um, the first five years were a blur for me um, because I felt like as an entrepreneur, I needed to put 24 seven into my business in order for me to be successful, but also recognizing that we do burn out. And when we burn out, we cannot be as effective as, and I have learned to disconnect. Um, just most recently, I took an 18 hour drive, no phone service, no internet service. And when I came back, it is the most refreshing thing because I am looking at my business from a totally new eye and I am very much in sync with what I'm doing versus just a go, go, go mode. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Cynthia. Very, very important message. Um, Francis, realistically, I, I really kind of want to keep that mess, that question going for a little while longer. Um, and I'm looking for your uh, response to this question, not just because of the role that you play within the BP BBPA, but because my understanding is that the BBPA just recently conducted a study with over 700 Black women entrepreneurs. And I'm sure that there was a number of findings that you came away with um, once that study was completed. Can you share with us the ones that you felt stood out to you the most? Definitely, definitely. 78.5% strongly agreed or strongly agreed that access to financing was a major issue. Mm. Then there, there was only, only there was 74% they agreed that access to equity or capital was an issue. More than a quarter of them didn't know where to go get help for mm. their businesses. And you know, we had we it's, it's like it twenty percent of the of the people we surveyed had enough money to cut to go on for the next few months. More than fifty eight percent thought they would have to close because of of the financial pressures they were under. So that's why we're so excited about about the the, the loan fund. And about babies, and you know, and even for women, I mean, forget about even you, 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 you set aside the this anti-black racism and all the barriers. Black women entrepreneurs are doubly disadvantaged because they already face the barriers that they have as women. They have mm -hmm. their roles to play as women in the home, and then they have the barriers as women, and then they have anti-black racism, and then they have a lack of access to capital. So, black women entrepreneurs actually face a bigger hurdle than any other demographic group. Thank you. Um, you know, as a sales trainer myself and speaker, I often talk about uh, the fact that if you want to be successful, I believe that you've got to do what successful people do. We need to study the habits and traits of the most successful people within our community, females particularly, and learn from, from them so that we can, uh, in many cases, duplicate that success with others. What would you say, uh, Dominique, uh, in your uh, time that you have spent counseling countless numbers of entrepreneurs, what are the most successful traits that you see that are consistent with uh, the Black female entrepreneurs, the successful ones? Yes, and I think it's all entrepreneurs, but for us particularly, the growth mindset. So being able to uh, look at things uh, as I'm keep learning, like Cynthia said, like keep changing, keep adjusting, 
it's very easy to get discouraged when you find closed doors along the way everywhere and and the attitudes people have, the questions they ask you uh, because you're female in business. And so the idea that you're you're constantly looking for what else can you do? What do you want instead? What's possible? So I do a lot of coaching to help people find their own answers. I'm in one business. I'm not in all the other businesses. So helping helping people do that and never, never give up I mean it's <laughs> so perseverance perseverance, perseverance. is one of the key attributes of successful female entrepreneurs is that what I'm hearing yes your perseverance okay yes. good that's absolutely fantastic so um I'm gonna come back to you now Francis you 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 I'm sure that as as many conversations have you as you have had with successful entrepreneurs you've probably had some not so um, you know, joyful conversations with unsuccessful entrepreneurs. How do you handle that conversation when that time comes for you to share with that entrepreneur that they're maybe not on the right track or how to um, reinvent uh, themselves if they have to, because they could very likely be on a trajectory that's not going to lead to a successful outcome? We, we have found in many instances that mentorship works. And that's why we have mentorship programs. Uh, Bades, Bades, as I spoke about, uh, is a mentorship program. And what, 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 we, what we do in Bades is we ask you, what are, your, what are your limitations? What are your expectations? What are your shortfalls? And then we have, people, we have experts sit with you and really go through your business. And at the end of the day, the, the outcome may not be that we give you what we ask for, but we may say to you, you're not on the right trajectory. And that we believe this is that you, this is not a business that you're suited for. You do not have the skill sets. But the whole idea of Bades and the mentorship that comes out of Bades and other programs is to make sure that we are on the right track. And where you are on the right track, and we think that what you need now is mentorship and the encouragement. Because Black women, as we identify, have perseverance. We are born to we have that determination to succeed failure is not in our dna so what we do is when we see that in your dna we then help you with the correct mentors that can guide you along that way and we are we we, we say in the Bates program when we have got you from here to there the three years that we're going to hold your hand to make sure that you scale up and you succeed all we ask of you is come back and help those that are at the back end. Mm. Mentorship in our community is important because many have identified they don't know where to go and who to turn to. So our success, our successful female entrepreneurs and all our entrepreneurs need to recognize the need to hold the hands of those that are coming up so we can all move up the ladder together. Wonderful. So it sounds like even if an entrepreneur were to come to you, um, and, you know, because they might not be on the right track or they haven't been experiencing the success that they hope, you will help them to get on the right track. You're going to give them the knowledge, the information and the training needed in order to, in many cases, maybe even reinvent themselves so that they are uh, inevitably going to be a successful entrepreneur. That's the idea. That's the idea. Awesome. Good stuff. Cynthia, let me ask you. Why do you believe Black women want to become entrepreneurs? Well, you know what? I think speaking for myself and I think a number of Black women, it's the challenge. I think we, like you said, we were born to persevere. We have it in us. Um, one of the things that when I made the decision to be a business person was looking at my work history. I've always been a very good employee. I've always been hardworking. What if I turned that into a self-employment? What outcome would I produce? So definitely have seen this success um, in working. We started off from scratch. Uh, we are the second largest relocation company in the Northwest Territories. We are the largest independent moving company on the Canadian market. We do have a staff of at least 20 um, across the country. So turning my employee mind to, okay, I can actually put in overtime for my employer. I can actually work really long hours to, wow, I can actually build a big business and really push myself and push my staff to where we are right now. So we have experienced growth. We do have um, a fleet of at least 20 vehicles on our lot. We have warehouses in Yellowknife. We have a warehouse in Edmonton. We do have a warehouse in Toronto. So we have experienced this growth and women across the country have it. We can push, we can do it. And I know we have seen it getting done. So I'm so excited for women across the country. 
Fantastic. And ladies, this question is for everybody as we uh, begin to wind down uh, the uh, this uh, episode. Um, let me ask you, to become an entrepreneur in many cases is a, the, one of the most difficult decisions that females will make. Uh, a lot of them have to put their own personal finances uh, on the line. And they are also considering the fact that in order to build generational wealth, which is something that Francis spoke about, entrepreneurship would appear to be the single most effective way to do so. Would you agree that that is the case of uh, that generational wealth is highly connected to entrepreneurship? Francis? Oh, I, I agree. And that's why we do what we do. Of course, I, I, I think entrepreneurship is like we as Black women, uh, like I said previously, have that determination to succeed. We've also been the breadwinners. You teach mm -hmm. a woman, you teach a village, you teach a country. You look at countries that are run by, 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 by females and you know, that they, you know that they are significantly better run. You look at organizations that are run by women and you see the same thing. So if we as women uh, take the banner and become entrepreneurs, we can make that change. So I would encourage any woman who wants to be an entrepreneur to seize that opportunity, but make sure that you get the support, the mentorship and the help, the connect with people in your community. And, and I also would encourage those of us in the community who have made it quote unquote, to see it as a responsibility oh, yeah. to bring those behind us with us. Thank you so much. Cynthia, uh, let me ask you, how much of a role has networking played in the success of your business? You know what, it has really played a significant role um, because in order for you to get those contracts, in order for you to be able to access that market share, you definitely need to go out. So one of the things that I did as a young business person starting thinking of being an entrepreneur was I volunteered with a lot of organizations, a community foundation, the hospital foundation, the United Way, the bigger organizations that we were able to tap into that network. So who did we meet during that network? We met organization CEOs, we met um, cabinet ministers within the territories, we met a lot of good information. So we found that by using that access, we were able to get information on how can we access certain services? How can we bid for certain contracts? How does this work? So networking does play a big significant role in being an entrepreneur. And it is always something that I encourage young businesses to make sure you are getting out of the, the chamber of commerce, events that are held so that you can get out there, get your business card out and get to connect. Thank you. And the last word now, I'll ask you just to please take 60 seconds or less and uh, share with the listeners today your best advice for any individual, particularly females, that are considering becoming an entrepreneur. Francis? Network. I'll, I'll seize on, the, on what was just said. Network. Tap into your community. We have the best. Just go for it, but make sure you network, you find mentors and you are open to receiving feedback. Thank you. Dominique? I would say find a mentor as well. So find, uh, not just one, a number of mentors and volunteer. Uh, so I'm saying two things because it's through those boards that Cynthia talks about that you're going to meet the people who can help you take your idea into and make it reality. Thank you. And Cynthia? Well, I think, um, the three below uh, points, but also perseverance. Um, so one thing that I found as a young entrepreneur was never take no as an answer. Um, never take any barriers as the, I cannot do this. Uh, when you face a challenge, research and see how you can turn this into an opportunity. And we learned a lot anytime we face a barrier. DOT has seized our vehicles because we are not compliant. Oh, we are now compliant and this has allowed us to access multi-jurisdictions. Oh, we were not able to bid on this contract because we didn't have the sufficient insurance. How can we be compliant? Oh, now we can actually bid for federal contracts because we now have the insurance. So never take no as an answer, always persevere, always research, and you will get to the bottom of what you need to be. Thank you so much. Thank all of you uh, for joining me today uh, in discussing entrepreneurship. And thank you for all that you do for the community. Uh, keep up the great work. And uh, Francis, thank you for the BBPA and thank you for the recent initiatives that you have brought forward. We look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for this fireside chat today with uh, our entrepreneurs and building the business. Look how
how far you have come on your own, but never alone. Through the rain and through the shine, here's your moment. Standing in your destiny